So this video is a collection of clips, TV news segments, trailers, commercials and videos from my fellow YouTubers about the 1993 release of Jurassic Park. I hope you enjoy it. Something big is coming to McDonald's. Or now. Something of such enormous proportions. Stand back. It could only be called the Jurassic Park Extra Value Meal. Okay. Let's see! An enormously juicy triple cheeseburger with fries and a medium drink in one of six free Jurassic Park collector cups. The Jurassic Park Extra Value Meal. A dino-sized value for a dino-sized appetite. Hey, where's mine? What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Jurassic Park is a 1990 science fiction novel written by Michael Crichton, a cautionary tale about genetic engineering. It presents the collapse of a zoological park showcasing genetically recreated dinosaurs to illustrate the mathematical concept of chaos theory and its real world implications. The novel began as a screenplay that Crichton wrote in 1983 about a graduate student who recreates a pterosaur. Eventually, given his reasoning that genetic research is expensive and there is no pressing need to create a dinosaur, Crichton concluded that it would emerge from a desire to entertain, leading to a wildlife park of extinct animals. In 1991, Steven Spielberg received the rights to the novel and adapted it into the blockbuster film Jurassic Park. Before the book was published, Crichton had demanded $1.5 million for the film rights and a substantial percentage of the gross. Warner Brothers and Tim Burton, Columbia Pictures and Richard Donner, and 20th Century Fox and Joe Dante bid for the rights, but Universal Pictures acquired them in May 1990 for Spielberg. James Cameron revealed in 2012 that he tried to get the rights, only to discover that Spielberg acquired them just a few hours prior. Universal paid Crichton a further $500,000 to adapt his own novel, which he had finished by the time Spielberg was filming Hook. Crichton noted that because the book was fairly long, his script had about 10-20% to 20 of the novel's content. Scenes were dropped for budgetary and practical reasons, and the violence was toned down. If you're in line for popcorn at the movies, and suddenly you hear the crowd inside the theater singing, it's because Universal Pictures is already priming audiences for what it hopes will be one of next summer's biggest hits, the live-action version of The Flintstones. The sneak preview trailer for the movie features the familiar Flintstones theme song, followed by a look at John Goodman as Fred Flintstone. The Flintstones trailer is playing through July 4th before showings of Universal Pictures' other Stone Age story, Jurassic Park, which is already the highest grossing picture so far this year after being in theaters for just two weeks. And as CNN Cherry Sylvester reports, Jurassic's success all started when author Michael Crichton sat down in front of a blank computer screen. It is a larger-than-life tale that is bringing author Michael Crichton monster acclaim. When asked what you were writing, you said, the most expensive movie ever made. Is that true? It's true. And everyone would say in response, let's have lunch. <laughs> it's Hollywood. It is not the most expensive, but it could be the most lucrative. Hollywood's launch of the dino movie leaves Crichton dealing with all the dino mania. He is often surrounded by airplane passengers reading his books. And though at 6'10", he often stands out in a crowd, he is rarely recognized as Jurassic's creator. It's an odd experience. I mean, I was in San Francisco airport and, and some kids were buying books and one kid said, well, did you read Jurassic Park? And he said, oh yeah, I read that. So I turned around and I said, is it any good? He says, yeah, it's good. Well, it's yeah, it's good. Yeah. 
Crichton was visible on the set consulting with director Steven Spielberg on the story which took him seven years to pen. But he is no newcomer to movies. His books have made the jump to the big screen for over 20 years and include The Terminal Man and The Andromeda Strain. Now you met Spielberg years ago. I read he actually took you kind of on a tour of Universal. I had um, sold The Andromeda Strain to Universal and I came up to look around, see the place. And, and I arrived and they said, well, there's this really nice kid that we think has a future as a director and he'll take you on a tour. And Stephen took me around. Good tour guide? Excellent. He is thrilled with Spielberg's translation of the book, less involved in the adaptation of Rising Sun, a study of Japanese-American relations cloaked in a murder mystery. You ever negotiated with the Japanese before? Crichton was accused of Japan bashing with the book, a description he believes is inaccurate. Then reports surfaced that the film was altered, changing the villain from Asian to Caucasian. He is not involved with the feature. There certainly is a controversy about it, but I don't have any way to talk about it because I just don't... All I really know about it is what I've read in the newspapers. The author's next subject is sexual harassment. That book was snapped up by Warner Brothers and could bring him more than three and a half million dollars, adding yet another chapter to his big success story. Cherry Sylvester, CNN Entertainment News, Hollywood. Jurassic Park is a 1993 American science fiction action film directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum and Richard Attenborough. It is the first installment in the Jurassic Park franchise and the first film of the original Jurassic Park trilogy, and is based on Michael Crichton's 1990 novel of the same name, with a screenplay by Crichton and David Cope. Malia Scotch Marmo began writing a script rewrite in October 1991 over a five month period, merging Ian Malcolm and Alan Grant. Spielberg wanted another writer to rework the script, so Universal President Casey Silver recommended David Cope, co writer of Death Becomes Her. Cope started afresh from Marmo's draft and used Spielberg's idea of a cartoon shown to the visitors to remove much of the exposition that filled Crichton's novel. While Cope tried to avoid the excessive character detail because, whenever they started talking about their personal lives, you couldn't care less. He tried to flesh out the characters and make for a more colourful cast, with moments such as Malcolm flirting with Sattler leading to Grant's jealousy, some characterizations that were changed for the novel, Hamill went from a ruthless businessman to a kindly old man. Because Spielberg identified with Hammond's obsession with showmanship, he also switched the characters of Tim and Lex in the book Tim is 11 and interested in computers and Lex is only 7 or 8 and interested in sports. After completing Hook, Spielberg wanted to film Schindler's List. Shid Scheinberg, president of Music Corporation of America, gave the green light to Schindler's List on the condition Spielberg make Jurassic Park first. He brought in Stan Winston to create the animatronic dinosaurs, Phil Tippett created as dinosaur supervisor to create the go motion dinosaurs for long shots, Michael Lantieri to supervise the onset effects and Dennis Murren of Industrial Light and Magic to do the digital compositing. Paleontologist Jack Horner supervised the designs of the dinosaurs. After 25 months of pre-production, filming began on August 24, 1992, on the Hawaiian island of Kauai. The three-week shoot involved various daytime exteriors for Isla Nublar's forests. On September 11th, Hurricane Iniki passed directly over Kauai, costing a day of shooting. Several of the storm scenes from the film are actual footage shot during the hurricane. Samuel L. Jackson was to film a lengthy death scene where his character is chased and killed by raptors, but the set was destroyed by Hurricane Iniki. By mid-September, the crew moved to California to shoot the raptors in the kitchen at stage 24 of the Universal Studio lot. Given the kitchen set was filled with reflective surfaces, cinematographer Dean Cundy had to carefully plan the illumination, while also using black cloths to hide the light reflections. The crew also shot the scenes involved in the power supply on stage 23, before going to Red Rock Canyon for the Montana dig scenes. The crew returned to Universal to shoot Grant's rescue of Tim, using a 50-foot prop with hydraulic wheels for the car fall and the Brachiosaurus encounter. The crew filmed scenes for the park's labs and control room, which used Apple animations for the computers lent by Silicon Graphics and Apple. Crichton's book had electric-powered Toyota Land Cruisers as the tour cars in Jurassic Park, but Spielberg made a deal with Ford Motor Company, who provided seven first-gen Ford Explorers. ILM's crew and veteran customizer George Barris modified the Explorers to create the illusion that they are autonomous cars by hiding the driver in the car's trunk. Barris also customized the Jeep Wranglers featured in the production. 
the crew moved to Warner Brothers Studio Stage 16 to shoot the T-Rex's attack on the SUVs. Shooting proved frustrating because when the water soaked the animatronic dinosaur's foam rubber skin, it caused the T-Rex to shake and quiver from the extra weight when the foam absorbed it. This forced Dan Winston's crew to dry the model with chamois between takes. During the scene where the T-Rex attacks the SUVs, the animatronic got too close to the glass and broke its tooth off. On set, Malcolm distracting the dinosaur with a flare was included at Goldblum's suggestion. He felt heroic action was better than going by the script, where, like Gennaro, Malcolm was scared and ran away. The ripples of the glass in the water were caused by the T-Rex's footsteps, were inspired by Spielberg listening to Earth, Wind and Fire in his car, and the vibrations the bass rhythms caused. Lantieri was unsure on how to create the shot until that night. Before filming, he put a glass of water on the guitar he was playing, which achieved the concentric circle in the water Spielberg wanted. The next morning, guitar strings were put inside the car and a man on the floor plucked them to achieve the effect. Back at Universal, the crew filmed scenes with the Dilophosaurus on stage 27. The shoot finished on stage 12 with the climatic chases of the raptors in the park's computer rooms and visitor centre. Spielberg changed the climax to bring back the T-Rex, abandoning the original ending where Grant uses a platform machine to manoeuvre a raptor into the fossil Tyrannosaurus jaws. The scene, which already included the juxtaposition of live dinosaurs in a museum filled with fossils, while also destroying the bones, now had an ending where the T-Rex saved the protagonists and afterward made what Spielberg described as a King Kong roar, while the iconic banner reading, When Dinosaurs Rule the Earth Flew. The film wrapped 12 days ahead of schedule on November 30th, and within days, editor Michael Kahn had a rough cut ready. Allowing Spielberg to start filming Schindler's List, Spielberg monitored their progress from Poland during the filming of Schindler's List, and had teleconferences four times a week with ILM's crew. He worked simultaneously on two vastly different productions, a bipolar experience, where he used every ounce of intuition on Schindler's List and every ounce of craft on Jurassic Park. Some of the software used to create the dinosaurs and other visual effects was Pixar's Render Man and Soft Image 3D. Along with the digital effects, Spielberg wanted the film to be the first with digital sound. He funded the creation of DTS, Digital Theatre Systems, to allow the audience to really hear the movie the way it was intended to be heard. The sound effects crew, supervised by George Lucas, finished by the end of April. Sound designer Gary Rydstrom considered it a fun process, given the film has all kinds of noise. Animal sounds, rain, gunshots, car crashes, and at times, no music. During the process, Spielberg flew on post-production weekends from Poland to Paris, where he met Rydstrom to see the sound progress. Former ILM CG animator Steve Spaz Williams said it took nearly a year for the shots that involved computer-generated dinosaurs to be completed. Jurassic Park was completed on May 28, 1993. John Williams began scoring the film at the end of February, and it was recorded a month later. Alexander Courage and John Newfield provided the score's orchestrations. As with Close Encounters of the Third Kind, another Spielberg film he scored, Williams felt he needed to write pieces that would convey a sense of awe and fascination. Given that the film dealt with the overwhelming happiness and excitement of seeing live dinosaurs, more suspenseful scenes such as the Tyrannosaurus attack required frightening themes. The soundtrack album was released on May 25, 1993. For the 20th anniversary of the film's release, a new soundtrack was issued for the digital download on April 9, 2013, including four bonus tracks selected by Williams. Universal took a lengthy pre-production period to carefully plan the Jurassic Park marketing campaign. It cost $65 million and included deals with over 100 companies to market 1,000 products. These included three Jurassic Park video games by Sega and Ocean Software, a toy line by Kenner, distributed by Hasbro, McDonald's Dino Size Meals, and a novelization for young children. The film was marketed with the tagline, An Adventure 65 Million Years in the Making. This was a joke that Spielberg made on set about the genuine thousands of years old mosquito in amber used for Hammond's walking stick. The Galliminus was the first dinosaur to be digitized, featuring in two ILM tests, first as a herd of skeletons and then a fully skinned while pursued by the T-Rex. Its design was based on ostriches, and to emphasize the bird-like qualities, the animation focused mostly on the herd rather than the individual animals. As reference for the dinosaur's run, the animators were filmed running at the ILM parking lot, with plastic pipes standing in as the tree that the Galliminus jump over. The footage inspired the incorporation of an animal falling as one of the artists did try to make the jump. Horse squeals became the Galliminus sounds. Tyrannosaurus was acknowledged by Spielberg as the star of the movie, and he rewrote the ending to feature the T-Rex for fear of disappointing the audience. Winston's animatronic T-Rex stood 6.1 meters, 20 feet, weighed 17,000 pounds, 8,000 kilos, and was 12 meters long. Jack Horner called it the closest I've ever been to a live dinosaur. While the consulting paleontologists did not agree on the dinosaur's movements, particularly its running capabilities, the dinosaur is depicted with a vision system based on movement. Though later studies indicate that the T-Rex had binocular vision, 
comparable to a bird of prey. Its roar is a baby elephant squeal combined with an alligator and crocodile noises as well as a tiger snarl and a lion's roar. Its grunts are those of a male koala and its breath a whale's blow. The Lerceraptor plays a major role in the film. The creature's depiction is ultimately not based on a natural dinosaur genus which was also significantly shorter. Shortly before Jurassic Park's theatrical release, the similar Utah raptor was discovered, although it proved even bigger than the film's raptors. This prompts St. Winston to joke, we made it, then they discovered it. For the attack on Muldoon and parts of the kitchen scene, the raptors were played by men in suits. Dolphin screams, walrus bellowing, geese hissing, an African crane's mating call, tortoises mating, and a human rasp were mixed in to formulate their various raptor sounds. Special effects work continue on the film with Tippett's unit adjusting to the new technology with dinosaur input devices. Models that fed information into computers to allow them to animate the characters like stop motion puppets. In addition, they acted out scenes with raptors and gallimimus. As well as the computer generated dinosaurs, ILM also created elements such as water splashing and digital face replacement for Ariana Richards' stunt double. Compositing the dinosaurs onto live action scenes took an hour. Compositing the dinosaurs onto live action scenes took around an hour. Rendering the dinosaurs often took up two to four hours per frame, and rendering the T-Rex in the rain took six hours per frame. Here is the video of the stop motion test footage. Jurassic Park seems to be on everybody's lips these days. In fact, there is so much fuss over the film that one of New York's most reserved institutions has joined in what could be called the Hyposaurus. Senior entertainment correspondent Bill Tosh has this story. It's finally here, Jurassic Park, the story of dinosaurs brought back to life came to theaters around the country this week. So it seems most of us moviegoers will have to be content to just sit in the dark and watch the actors romp with those prehistoric creatures on screen. 
But if you live here in New York City or plan on visiting this summer, guess what? You can come here to the American Museum of Natural History and see with your very own eyes up close the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park. When Peter May, who created some of the film's creatures, suggested to Steven Spielberg the idea of an exhibit, the gears were set in motion on one condition. Steven Spielberg said as long as it's done under the ban of a non-profit organization, it's fine. So the proceeds from the exhibit go back to the science of paleontology. So enter the Museum of Natural History and a non-profit organization called the Dinosaur Society which hopes the exhibit will do more than just entertain. Today, we finally have a shot of getting kids excited again about something that's imaginative, that's exciting, that kids get turned on to, that parents can reach down inside of them and turn on that creative switch. Although having a real up-close look at some of the things that were actually in a movie that could be the blockbuster of all time is kind of neat. Well, while we have the experts on hand, let's ask a few questions about all this. Where have they stretched the truth? Well, it's a Hollywood production. They stretched the truth throughout. The uh, Dilophosaurus is one-third the size of a real one. The Brachiosaurus and Velociraptors are much larger. That doesn't really bother me very much. Let's get those names again. After all, we may be hearing them for some time. Velociraptor and uh, Dilophosaurus and Brachiosaurus. Although in the film and actual laboratories, it's DNA experimentation that unlocks those dinosaur secrets, there will be no Jurassic Park in our future. Even if in theory we can imagine situations which would be able to do this, in all practicality, there's no way this is ever going to happen. Well, we always have the movies. Bill Tush, CNN Entertainment News, New York. In Jurassic Park, dinosaurs are on the loose, but at McDonald's you'll find them on six Jurassic Park electric cups. Get one free when you buy a large drink or dino-sized extra value meal. But catch them quick, before they're extinct. What the hell do you think you're doing in here? Hey, we were saving that! But today, I guarantee it. Jurassic Park premiered at the Uptown Theatre in Washington, D.C. on June 9, 1993, in support of two children's charities. The film had previews on 14,000 screens starting at 9.30pm EDT on Thursday, June 10th, and officially opened on Friday in 2,400 theatre locations and an estimated 3,400 screens. Hello everyone and welcome to Showbiz Today. Steven Spielberg brought dinosaurs to DC Wednesday as the director's new film Jurassic Park made its world premiere in the nation's capital. The cast was joined by many Washington VIPs at the screening of the movie, which is based on the Michael Crichton novel of the same name. 300 inner city kids also attended the opening, which raised money for the Children's Defense Fund. CNN Sherry Sylvester has more on the film that is expected to be one of the summer's biggest blockbusters. When Michael Crichton was asked what he was writing, he replied, the most expensive movie ever made. It turns out Jurassic Park is only the third priciest film this summer, but it is expected to take the biggest bite out of the box office. Dinosaurs and man, two species separated by 65 million years of evolution have just been suddenly thrown back into the mix together. I love the almost arrogance of the campaign where you know there's this giant poster in black and it just says june 11th 1993 like four months ago and i'm thinking wow they won't even say what the name of the movie is i didn't realize it was going to be this machinery of this this whole organized campaign with the lunch boxes and before you even knew what you had you you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox and now they're selling it. You're the story was a simple sell. Scientists, through the magic of DNA, have been able to clone dinosaurs 65 million years after their extinction. But it took Steven Spielberg to bring them to the big screen in a believable way. You know, this isn't the beast from 20,000 fa fathoms. You know, this isn't Dinosaurus and this isn't the Lost World. This is really a movie that I think 
is really happening as I'm watching it. You said you've got a T-Rex? Uh -huh. How believable were they when you saw them? We had dinosaurs on the set, and they were completely realistic. So there, you're acting with a dinosaur, and that's all there is to it. You know, like 15 guys where one would operate the breathing, one's operating the blinking, one the tongue. It's an amazing creature. Well, I was scared of them, and what's more, uh, the T-Rex, for instance, weighed about three tons. Now, if you're in the way of that thing, and it's moving, uh, you could be seriously hurt. Behind the scenes, the cast had other forces of nature to fear as Hurricane Aniki tore through their sets on the island of Hawaii. The experience brought the cast closer together, particularly Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum, who began dating after the film wrapped. But questions about their relationship have been far outnumbered by questions about the dinosaurs. What the dinosaurs are like. I mean, everybody wants to know. Everyone is dealing with the dinomania. Kids, and my kids, who have, who have a whole new light of respect in their eye for Dad now that he's um, acted with dinosaurs. We as actors go in and immediately you realize the star of the movie is Steven Spielberg. Then come the dinosaurs. Then come, you know, kind of us. Can I touch it? Sure. So how big will the audience be? Other studios in town are so sure of monster-sized crowds for Jurassic Park that they will not open any of their pictures against it. Meanwhile, Universal is reading 3,000 prints of the dino picture. Only Batman Returns open with more. <laughs> Sherry Sylvester, CNN Entertainment News, Hollywood. Moviegoers weren't the only ones scared by Jurassic Park. No studio had the guts to release a film against it over the weekend. Our movie analyst Martin Grove joins us live from Hollywood with more on Jurassic's killer opening. Marty. Uh, Lauren, you know, this movie is knocking them dead at the box office. Indeed, Jurassic Park premiered with the vengeance of a velociraptor, a remarkable feat for Universal Pictures. But then again, June 11th was a lucky day for Universal and Steven Spielberg once before. Ouch. On June 11th, 1982, Ouch. Universal Pictures opened E.T. the Extraterrestrial, the film that would become the highest grossing in movie history, bringing in $399 million domestically. Just like a flock of birds evading a predator. It's too soon to say if Jurassic Park will be as big as E.T., but it's certainly giving some other blockbusters a real run for its money. Will Jurassic Park's success stomp on what Columbia Pictures hopes is their lucky day? With Last Action Hero opening this coming Friday, history shows there's room enough for two big money makers in the same summer season. For example, in June 1984, Ghostbusters and Gremlins opened the same weekend, and both films scared up lots of moviegoers. The summer of 89 starred Batman and Indiana Jones on The Last Crusade. Batman went on to gross $251 million, while Indy 3 did $197 million. And of course, last summer boasted two blockbusters, Lethal Weapon 3 and Batman Returns, both sequels and both brought in the big bucks. So it looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Last Action Hero have at least a fighting chance of surviving the onslaught of the dinosaurs. Lauren? But Marty, today's Daily Variety and also The Hollywood Reporter both gave absolutely scathing reviews to Last Action Hero. If the negative reports keep coming between now and Friday, could Arnold Schwarzenegger have a bust on his hands? Uh, Lauren, fortunately, most moviegoers don't read uh, The Hollywood Trade, <laughs> so we're safe on that account. Uh, of course, uh, bad reviews uh, in general could be harmful, but I think what really will matter is this fact that uh, audiences love Arnold Schwarzenegger, so it'll be a big opening no matter what. And after that, it's all up to word of mouth. And Marty, one final question. I know, we all know that Jurassic Park just opened, but there is already talk of a sequel? Yes, and uh, you know, with numbers like these, Lauren, uh, let's face it, uh, I don't think we're going to see Jurassic Park turn extinct at the box office. Uh, <laughs> you can look for Universal to try for a sequel. We'll be looking, Marty. Thank you so much, and we'll look for you next Monday. Great. You know what this is? It's a dinosaur egg. The dinosaurs are breeding. On Showbiz Today, Jurassic Park takes off like a pterodactyl at the box office. But parents and psychologists say the movie is too scary for young kids. And welcome to Showbiz Today. I'm Lauren Sidney. Jim Moray has the day off. Well, no doubt about it, Jurassic Park is pure dynamite at the box office. As CNN Sherry Sylvester reports from Hollywood, the movie opened to the biggest non-holiday weekend business in 65 million years. 
better than Batman, said some of the moviegoers leaving the theater. Better than Batman business, say the folks at Universal. Monster-sized crowds devoured nearly every available ticket. Jurassic Park opened to an estimated $50 million at the box office. Look, he's zeroing in on the money. It's everywhere you go, it's all you see is dinosaurs, dinosaurs, dinosaurs. A lot of hype, but I wasn't disappointed. It was great. This was way better than Batman. You felt like the dinosaurs were actually standing next to you. For their part, the cast and crew kept the film's look a secret before its opening. Dinosaur sightings were rare. No visitors were allowed to roam the set. Steven Spielberg, working on another film in Poland, had his viewings of this work in progress scrambled on the satellite, so no one would get a sneak preview. It was pretty secretive. They were, uh, they didn't want to show anything to anybody. No, you really had to, I thought, oh, you know, the actor, hello, nice to see you. But they had a guard there going, uh, Mm. Keeping his creatures a secret has kept the surprise in such past Spielberg films as E.T., but many parents were surprised at the amount of violence in Jurassic Park. In spite of its PG-13 rating, many kids under the age of 13 were lining up to see the film. My children really want to see the movie, but in the same token, they've seen other movies like Godzilla and King Kong movies, so I don't think it'll damage them too much. Spielberg's own kids are too young for the film, as is author Michael Crichton's four-year-old. My sense about this is that um, children under six, it's, not, it's really not suitable. And between six and eight, uh, my way of looking at it is to say to parents, has your child seen T2? And if the kid's seen T2, then this is fine. I have um, an 11-year-old and a nine-year-old who are busting to see the film, and I'm very happy for them to see the film. But the kid also has to have a healthy knowledge in that there used to be things called dinosaurs that walked the earth, and uh, none of them were purple, sang songs that were named Barney. But for my age and all the way up to as old as you can be, they're great. Psychiatrist David Levy, who has not seen the film, offers this bit of advice for parents. Talk to other people, other adults whom you respect, whom you trust, who've seen the movie, and weigh their opinion uh, with your decision. Universal estimates that only 2% of the crowd so far has been under the age of 8. For others, the 65 million year wait is over. All that's left to do is count the millions in dino dollars. Sherry Sylvester, CNN Entertainment News, Hollywood. Ahoy there, mates. Captain Adam here from Captain Adam's VHS Pirate Ship. And today, I'm going to be talking about Jurassic Park. Released in theaters June 11th, 1993, it would go on to be one of those movies that basically exemplifies the term summer blockbuster. Yes, just like Tim Burton's Batman did in 89 and Terminator 2 did in 91, Jurassic Park had 93 on lock, as the kids say. I mean, you could say that. It, it did okay in theaters, raking in a little over a billion dollars worldwide at the box office. A billion. Billion. billion Million dollars. I can't even count that high. I mean, I can, but I won't. That's just an astronomical amount of money, and when you factor in the $63 million budget and the $65 million marketing and promotional campaign, this movie still came out on top. I'd say by a wide margin. Yes, the movie was huge, and the marketing was huger. Yes, this massive marketing campaign incorporated big companies like Sega, McDonald's, and toy giant Kenner. And they, of course, were responsible for the Jurassic Park action figures, which I thought were pretty cool and all, but something always seemed a little off. And by a little off, I mean they seemingly had nothing to do with the movie. There's a Stegosaurus figure? There's no Stegosaurus in the movie. Why is there a Pteranodon figure, and why does Tim look like he was the fourth member of Hanson? And I must have missed the part in the the film where Roy Orbison was in it. Oh, that's supposed to be Dennis Nedry. And why wasn't there a Lex figure? Or an Ian Malcolm figure? These are two pretty big characters. Why aren't there figures for them? Oh, you could do a Roy Orbison, but you can't do Ian Malcolm? Now, Kenner would eventually correct this mistake and include an Ian Malcolm figure in their Series 2 line of Jurassic Park, but still, no Lex. And Ariana Richards, the actress who portrayed Lex, has stated in interviews that she'll always be disappointed she never got an action figure. Well, we're talking original Jurassic Park action figures here. There would eventually be a Lex figure, but not until 2021. Boy, is that after the fact or what? And wow, check out that likeness. 
Gee, she looks like Mark Zuckerberg. Come on now, you had plenty of time to get this right. But anyways, the Kenner toy line had some pretty glaring discrepancies, but there is a pretty practical reason for that. It takes a considerable amount of time to manufacture a toy line, and their production starts far in advance, and in most cases, the toy line is completed before the movie ends. You want to have the product on store shelves to coincide with the movie's release, and to do so, you have to get started pretty far in advance. But this production method means that the product is not going to be entirely accurate to the source material. When it comes does a toy line for a film, usually it's way before the movie has even started filming, or it's right at the beginning of the film's production, meaning that the toy company does not have much to work with, and they have to rely on first drafts of screenplays and images that may not be exactly faithful to the finished film. And since director Steven Spielberg is famously secretive about his projects, Kenner wasn't given much information to go on, and so they largely had to rely on the Jurassic Park novel by Michael Crichton, in which the film is based on. If you didn't know that, just jump off a cliff. And the novel does include a stegosaurus, and Tim sort of looks like this, though I still don't get where they get Roy Orbison from, and all of the other discrepancies within this toy line are due to that fact, and you really can't blame them. It's what they had to work with, and they did a pretty good job. And this would also transcend into the world of the Jurassic Park video games, in which there were quite a few, but the one that got the most press was Jurassic Park for Sega Genesis, wherein it looked great, and it was pretty cool, but really had nothing to do with the movie. Yeah, come on, you remember when Alan Grant lobbed the grenade at a Triceratops? And then there were the Jurassic Park games for the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo, which were entirely different than the Sega Genesis game, but again, had nothing really to do with the movie. Really though, all these games are sort of like the movies, but it's like the developers were told, here's the concept, here's the characters, and go. Surely I jest, but basically that's what happened, and it was all just based on loose ideas without even seeing the film. But it's all just marketing and merchandising, and accuracy really doesn't matter all that much because they know they're going to get your money, and they did. Now, as I mentioned earlier, and something that's pretty obvious, is that Jurassic Park is based on the 1990 Michael Crichton novel of the same name. And that's really where the similarities end, because the movie is quite different than the novel. Oh, I comedically exaggerate, and there's more similarities than just the title, but not many. Now, it's not all that surprising that a film adaptation is going to be quite different than the book it's based on. This has been a common practice all throughout cinema history, because, well, some things just do not work on film. The Universal Pictures Dracula film is quite different than the Bram Stoker novel, and the Universal Pictures Frankenstein film is quite different than the Mary Shelley novel. Who the hell is Henry Frankenstein? And even the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings films, which were praised for being faithful to the books, really are quite different than the books. Geez, could this Captain Adam segment get any more off track? You bet Jurassic can! The more you think about it, the more it makes sense, because if you read The Return of the King book, then you realize that most of it just would not work in the movie. And the same is true for basically any film adaptation, most especially for Jurassic Park. That's just how it goes, and it's up to you to determine how much that matters. The Jurassic Park film is certainly most famous for its use of groundbreaking special effects, most especially when it came to its use of CGI, or computer-generated images. Images. <laughs> I'm not really going to delve into that because it's pretty well covered, but I will say that they almost did not go in that direction. They were going to go with good old stop motion animation, headed up by stop motion demigod Phil Tippett, and some screen tests were shot to see how it would work. And while this method did look pretty impressive, as you can see here, they decided to go with CGI, which was a relatively fledgling technology at the time, and they totally nailed it. And what's funny is technology should improve as time goes on, but it seems like Jurassic Park was the zenith of CGI. And every movie since then that uses CGI, which is basically all of them, just don't look quite as good. Seems like the technology just got worse. Which of course is only my opinion, but all you gotta do is watch An American Werewolf in Paris, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. And certainly there's plenty of other examples, like Jar Jar Banks, which is... Man, I, I just don't know what they were thinking there. The problem with CGI, in my opinion, is that it's just far too animated. It's like it's overdone, overproduced, it's far too fluid, things just don't move that way. And most movies that have real actors interacting with computer-generated characters just sort of seem like Roger Rabbit or Cool World. But see, those work because they're cartoons, they're supposed to look that way, and yet we're supposed to believe that Jar Jar Binks is a real creature! It looks like he's from Toontown, and even Gollum from the Lord of the Rings movies, as well done as that was, still looks a little cartoonish. I just think it's funny that here we are in the future and the pinnacle of this highly used technology happened over 30 years ago. But that's one of the many reasons this movie left its mark upon the world. And even though it's a franchise that they're still beating to death today with the Jurassic World movies, man, I just can't stand those films and 
well, Jurassic Park 3 never should have happened, and you know what, The Lost World kind of sucks too, but uh, anyways, all of these films are never going to captivate the world like Jurassic Park did. It was just one of those movies that was the right thing at the right time, and the world was ready for it. I know I was. I saw this movie 13 times in the theater. Of course, movies were a lot cheaper back then. I certainly wouldn't do something like that nowadays. I get highly nostalgic when I think about Jurassic Park and the summer of 93, because it reminded me of Batman in the summer of 89. Because Batman was everywhere in the summer of 89, and dinosaurs were everywhere in the summer of 93. 93 had a magical summer, and Jurassic Park is responsible for that. This has been Captain Adam of Captain Adam's VHS Pirate Ship. Take care out there, and I'll see you on the seven seas. Well, in case you've missed it, there's another big event this weekend, aside from the Tory Leadership Convention. Today is opening day for Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg's prehistoric mega movie. 65 million years in the making, Jurassic Park will show you dinosaurs as you've never seen them before. But as Primetime's David Gilmore tells us, some children may not like what they see. Today is the opening day of Steven Spielberg's film Jurassic Park. The adaptation of Michael Crichton's pulp novel about dinosaurs run amok in a modern day theme park has got a lot of people all whipped up. Audiences smell a box office smash. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Dinosaurs induce an odd frisson. Perhaps it's because we study them when we're little, when our imaginations are transportingly vivid. Yet dinosaurs, for many anyway, aren't really scary. They seem too big, too clumsy, or at least they did until today. It was scary. I was scared. Nine-year-old Jacob Lipsy saw a preview of the movie. It wasn't what he expected. I was expecting a little child's movie. I mean, the little dinosaur kind that goes stumping across the screen and squishing people with yelling in the background. But this movie was not like that. It was a horror film, a total horror film. Cineplex Odeon Vice President Howard Lichtman points out that the film rating is not marked family. It's parental guidance, frightening scenes, which means you're not going to see blood and you're not going to see sex. But you are going to see an avalanche of toys and trinkets and games, all sorts of goodies to buy now and cart to the basement later. And just imagine where the little ones will want to eat after the movie. Something big is coming to McDonald's. McDonald's says it's aimed at adults. I don't know about you, but I'm not interested in a reusable dinosaur cup. Patricia Best is a business journalist. I think there's a huge mixed message here. The, the, the subject is dinosaurs. That's a children's subject. They love dinosaurs. But the movie is a violent movie. It's a gory movie about killing. And many of the products, and there are a thousand of them that are being merchandised with this film, are aimed at young children. It's a risky business marketing a movie and a product at the same time. Sometimes the movie can bomb, and so does the product by association. Sometimes the product is for children, and the movie isn't. Remember the hoopla around Batman Returns. One thing seems fairly certain, and that's that Jurassic Park is going to be a box office hit. But what's not clear at all is how it's going to play with children. If it terrifies them, that's going to enrage their parents. And an angry parent is not a good consumer. For CBC News, I'm David Gilmore. Across North America on movie screens, dinosaurs are coming back to life today in the new movie Jurassic Park. The eagerly awaited film was greeted by long lines at special sneak previews Thursday night. Some experts are predicting the Universal Studios picture could generate as much as $50 million in box office business this weekend. And Sid Scheinberg, president of Universal's parent company, MCA, tells the Associated Press he thinks Jurassic will be the biggest picture of all time. Amid widespread criticism that the PG-13 film is too violent for young children. Most viewers had nothing but rave reviews. It was fantastic. It was so scary. It, it really was the most exciting film I've ever seen. I think if not for the, for the laugh lines in it, people would have had heart attacks. But they were able to get such a visceral, immediate response. I mean, it didn't say this is an effect. It was like, bam. Well, I'm still shaking from it. It's scary. The thrills never stopped. It was amazing. It was really good. It was a little scary sometimes. Sometimes it was funny. It didn't seem to bother them. They just pretty much uh, closed their eyes and said, wake me when it's over. It's the best picture I've seen in about the last 10 years. Okay, 
it's okay. Brachiosaur. They're back after millions of years. Dinosaurs, of course, in Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park. And the bottom line is that his special effects dinosaurs are truly thrilling, but unfortunately his human characters are not. Sam Neill and Laura Dern play archaeologists lured to a billionaire Richard Attenborough's nature park where he has grown some very real dinosaurs. He's looking for the scientist's endorsement. They're looking at the dinosaurs, and so are we. Where's the man? Well, we clocked the T-Rex to 32 miles an hour. T-Rex? Mm-hmm. You said you've got a T-Rex? Uh-huh. Say again. Also on the island, a skeptical mathematician played by Jeff Goldblum, the best human character in this movie. He has some of the same adult edge as Spielberg's adult characters in Jaws. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well, I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. As you might expect, in the movies, when man plays God, he loses, and the dinosaurs are soon running free. Look at the wheeling the uniform direction changes, just like a flock of birds evading a predator. They're, uh... <laughs> they're flocking this way. There are children under attack, too, in the park, the grandchildren of the park's owner, Richard Attenborough. Despite their presence, however, in my opinion, Jurassic Park is too intense for children under the age of, say, 10. Turn the light off. Turn the light off. Turn the light off! Jurassic Park has a number of peak thrills at the level of the attacks in Jaws, and it has moments of real wonder. But when the animals are off screen, the film really lags. That wasn't true if you think about it with Jaws, which had three marvelous characters hunting the shark. Jurassic Park only has Goldblum. The rest of the crew stands around and smiles or schemes. Still, thumbs up for me. The action scenes are really enjoyable. I gave a thumbs up too, and also for the action scenes, and I feel that really this movie though is a missed opportunity because what he doesn't have here, and what I really missed from a movie by Spielberg like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, wow. is the sense of awe, mm -hmm. the sense of majesty. These creatures are back, and it's amazing, and yes. right away after an opening shot that has a little of that, yes, it does. the movie disintegrates basically into a monster picture where the dinosaurs are chasing everybody, and the people are running away, and there's lots of action yeah. and lots of screaming, but there's no, not really uh, any opportunity to really give these creatures their due. It's almost like the movie doesn't have any respect for the intelligence of the audience that they might really be interested in dinosaurs instead of just in the action. We could, have, we could have used more scenes, mm -hmm. you're right, of, of awe. And, and, and that's, well, I think you're just right. And I think you're right about whether or not it's too intense for kids. Now, I've yeah. talked to some parents who yeah. have really prepped their their children. They've yeah. said, look, the kids in the movie don't get hurt, and yeah. the dinosaurs are just special effects, or their animation, yeah, or their models. Never gonna get. And to a degree, I think you can prepare children for a movie like this, but at the same time, I think there are scenes in this movie that are very intense. Now, it's being aimed at kids. I mean, yes. it's being promoted through dino meals at McDonald's, and a lot of kids are going to want to little see ones. this movie, and I think for the little ones, it's going to be too, I've heard be stories too strong. I've heard of uh, parents taking their kids out of the theaters over this uh, opening week, uh, yeah. uh, little tiny kids under, under the age of 10. I wonder. Do you know, once upon a time, the biggest star in the cinema, and you'll probably find this hard to believe, was Burt Reynolds. He was followed by Clint Eastwood, who was followed by Stallone, who was followed by Eddie Murphy, who was followed by Schwarzenegger. If, as Last Action Hero seems to indicate, Arnie 2 has now reached his sell-by date, it'll be interesting to see who comes next. Not, please God, John claude Van Damme. So, pushing this dreadful thought to one side, let's move on to the next of my top ten, Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park. Judged by any yardstick, this is not a great film, but the dinosaurs are so magnificently recreated and the direction is so superbly handled that it's immensely enjoyable. It's so well made, in fact, so well paced, that it's only afterwards, when it's all over, that you realise that hardly any story was involved at all. It's been estimated that nearly 15 million people saw Jurassic Park in Britain alone, and that's a vast tonnage of bums on an awful lot of seats. So Jurassic Park was a major contributor in boosting cinema attendance this year to around 112 million people.
Uh, now, eventually, you do plan to have dinosaurs on your on your dinosaur tour, right? Hello. Hello. Yes. I really hate that man. Jurassic Park had its UK premiere on the 15th of July 1993. It was a joint premiere with screenings in London and a small cinema in Carmarthenshire, West Wales. Empire in London's Leicester Square for the royal premiere of Steven Spielberg's 1993 blockbuster movie Jurassic Park. Now they had promised me a limousine for tonight and this is what turned up but they assure me it's dinosaur proof. Shall we go boys? This has to be the most publicised, typed and in box office terms the most successful movie of all times. It's already taken a staggering $200 million in just over four weeks in the United States, and now it's our turn to rave about it. Well, the critics have given it the big thumbs up, and the Princess of Wales is here tonight to meet the stars and the movie makers, and of course to watch the film. And you can do that with us as well as we talk to the stars and watch the presentation to the Princess of Wales, and of course preview some of the highlights of the film. Uh, Sam Neill, everybody's talking about the special effects. How impressed were you by them? Well, I was very impressed. I'm impressed to see them on the screen, and I'm impressed. I was impressed on the floor when we were shooting the film. Um, the, the special effects are such that they, they never really feel like special effects. They feel like dinosaurs. Was it quite moving to see your first dinosaur? Well, the first dinosaur was sick, you know, and I always feel sorry for sick animals, and this is a very big sick animal. And he looked so real and kind of pitiable that um, it sort of brought a tear to the eye. But you'll see him in the film. You know. Now the film has been so successful. Did you expect it to be like this? Well, I thought it would be. I thought it would be a success. You know, I thought. Um, I thought all the ingredients were there. We had Spielberg and some great actors and a good script and some pretty good dinosaurs. So the film would uh, would work and people would like it. But I had no idea that it would take off in the way that it has. It's become sort of this tidal wave type phenomenon. No stopping it. They say you should never work with uh, children or dinosaurs or something like that. You ended up doing both. How was that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I survived, you know, and I came out the other end. And um, and I made some good friends, you know. The kids are good friends of mine. The dinosaurs are not quite as friendly, but, you know, um, we'll probably work together again. Who knows? Well, you have three children of your own. What do yeah. they think of the film? Well, one of them is seeing it for the first time tonight, and uh, he can't wait. And my oldest one has already seen it, and she seemed absolutely horrified at the time, but she wants to see it another half a dozen times, so I, I guess it worked for her. Are they very impressed that it's their dad up there? Yeah, it's kind of cool to have dad in a film that all their friends are talking about. <laughs> it makes a change. If there is to be a sequel, would you like to be in it? Yeah, but well, particularly if Stephen's directing it, because I think uh, most of the magic of the film is, is largely due to his, you know, to his being at the helm. So I'd very much like to be in it if he's doing it. Jurassic Park also had a UK premiere on the 15th of July 1993 in a small cinema in Carmarthenshire, West Wales. Elizabeth Evans, the leader of the youth theatre in Carmarthen, had launched a campaign to save the Lyric Cinema from closure and had secured a screening of the film. The distribution company later reportedly went back on their words, so the mayor of Carmarthen at the time, Richard Goodridge, stepped in to help with a fax to the film's director, Steven Spielberg. Then, six days later, a response arrived from the managing director of United International Pictures. The letter stated, In order not to disappoint the people of Carmarthen, I have now given instructions for a print of Jurassic Park to be allocated at the Lyric Cinema. Not only did they agree to show the film itself, but it was also shown at the same time as the London premiere. This story was then made into a 2022 film called Save the Cinema, with Jonathan Price, Samantha Morton and Tom Felton. When Jurassic Park came out, or even, you know, to go to go further back, I'll, I'll try and condense this four-hour story into, like, four minutes. <laughs> uh, I was into dinosaurs as a kid for about a year before Jurassic Park was even a thing. So I would have been, like, ten 
maybe no, I was ten when it came out. So let's say eight and nine year old me as a massive as a dinosaur kid. I think every 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 kid may you know goes through a dinosaur phase of, of some form, but I was heavy, heavy, heavy into dinosaurs. When the trailers started to come out in the in the, in the random magazines and you would see that there's like there's a big dinosaur movie, a big budget dinosaur movie, like I was all, I was already loving this movie before I'd even seen one one frame of this movie, and then the trailers come out, and I'm so excited for it. Like I remember you mentioned the GMTV and the Big Breakfast and stuff like that earlier on. I remember taping everything I possibly could about Jurassic Park from the TV, whether it was like you know the the. the Big Breakfast, the GMTV shows, the Saturday morning shows, the, the Barry Norman review shows, anything like that. The trailers that were on TV, the TV spots. And I was um, like, I I had two VHS deck, deck players um, as a kid in the house. Um, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, we weren't, you know, we, we weren't rich or affluent at all. We just, I, I happened to grab one because I was always in, like, I was, I was editing video, like, just by tape to tape back then because it's, right. it's always something I was into. So, there was other stuff that we used two VHS machines for, but I, I won't tell you what they were. <laughs> but me and my brother had a little bit of an empire going. Anyway, so I had I had taped all the trailers, all the TV spots, anything I could see. So like, and and I'd kind of cut, dubbed them together on any one tape. So I had before the movie came out, I had like an eighteen minute VHS like sizzle reel <laughs> for Jurassic Park before it even came out. So the hype levels for Jurassic Park for me. I don't think have, have ever been surpassed, even with you know modern day Marvel movies. As much as I love them, like there's you, I can't. Nothing compares to like Jurassic Park hype for a dinosaur loving ten year old kid. So it comes out. It's July, I think July nineteen ninety three in the UK. Go and see it at the cinema with my dad. Uh, that like every Friday night. That was kind of or most Friday nights. That was something me and my dad did. We um, uh, we'd always go to the cinema. Um, Go and see Jurassic Park. Obviously, love it. Like, like I said, even if it was terrible, I'd still love it. But it's not terrible. It's it's a great movie. It's the greatest movie. Absolutely loved it. Next Friday, Dad's like, right, would you want to go and see Jurassic Park? Okay. So this goes on for seven weeks. So seven weeks in a row, my dad takes me to see Jurassic Park. Week number eight rolls around, and he's like, would you want to go and see Jurassic Park? And he finally he finally puts his foot down. Says says no, we're not going to see it. Pick something else. And I'm like, oh, dad, please. He's like, no, pick something else. I'm like, right, okay. So I think, and then, you know, back then we, it was a newspaper you looked at. Newspapers, kids, uh, Google what they were. <laughs> so, you know, checking the newspaper or teletext. There might have been teletext that you checked yeah, as well. Teletext. The teletext. Teletext was the internet for, you know, before you had internet for, count, for council tele owners. Week number eight, instead of going to see Jurassic Park for the eighth time, we go and see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, Turtles in Time. And we come out of that screening, and I'll never forget this. My dad says to me, "We should have just saw Jurassic Park again." <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. To, to this day, it's like one of my fondest, fondest, fondest memories with my dad. It's one of my fondest memories of movies. It's one of my fondest memories of Jurassic Park. Like it's one of my most treasured like cinema memories. Was seven weeks in a row Jurassic Park. Eighth week Turtles three. Should I just saw Jurassic Park again? <laughs> My story for the release of Jurassic Park is a simple one. At that time I lived over 50 miles from the nearest multiplex and as such went about every two weeks to see several films at once. The Monday before the film was released I bought two tickets for the midnight showing on the Saturday of the opening weekend. I was going to ask the girl from the chip shop to join me but I chickened out. So I went on my own and thoroughly enjoyed it. Also for weeks after its release if you were in a screen opposite one showing Jurassic Park you could hear and feel the T-Rex roar coming through the walls. Before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox and now <laughs> you're selling it. You're selling If you look closely, you may spot a venom-spitting Dilophosaurus. It's Jurassic Park! The evil Nedry steals a baby Brachiosaurus, but an electronic hooting Dilophosaurus attacks him! Look out! 
Ah! Muldoon takes the capture copter to save Nedry. Fire the net! Got him! Nedry's free! But the stomping and roaring giant T-Rex spots an easy meal. He's sold separately. Look for the J.P. Mark. Ah! It's happening, but only at Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, where the giant dinosaurs live again with all the excitement of the movie. Dino Look for the J.P. Mark only at Jurassic Park. So now we'll have a look at some of the Jurassic Park merchandise I have. I had ordered the book for this video, but it hasn't turned up. But this is what I ordered, and I originally had this book, which is the one I read when the film came out. So I got a lovely T-Rex mug. I believe, judging by the state of this, it's an original one. It's hard to tell, but it does have a nice T-Rex coaster for it to sit on. I got this happy birthday card, mobile cards, right? Which I don't know where I got it from. I think it's from a charity shop, I think, way back in the day. As you can see, it folds out and has some pictures that you can pop out and then hang in a little display. And finally, I do have this book, The Making of Jurassic Park, which is came out way back when and has all the details about the making of the film you could want to know before you've had DVD making ofs and etc. But there we go, on with the show. It's Jurassic Park. The dinosaurs are loose. Tim Murphy snares a Dimetrodon. Grant wrestles with a dangerous Coelophysis. And a Pteranodon battles a spitting Dilophosaurus. Each sold separately. It's happening, but only at Jurassic Park. It's the Jurassic Park Command Compound. With an electronic computer that says over a hundred commands. Help. Ah. We need more firepower. The computer help. helps you control Jurassic Park. Got it. Hey, you're right. ah. Look out, Grant! Fire the net! Got him! Compound secure. Yeah. Jurassic Park electronic talking command compound figures and dinosaurs sold separately. Batteries not included. What the hell? Look at this workstation. What a complete slob. Hey guys, I'm the Trash Picture Show and Video Tasties has asked me to participate in this awesome Jurassic Park video. And considering I am known as the action figure guy, I suppose I better focus on some Jurassic Park action figures. Like any 90s behemoth such as Jurassic Park, the merchandising was strong with this flick and leading the way was Kenner with a fabulous action figure line. Ever since Kenner launched their Star Wars figures in the late 70s to tie in with the George Lucas movie, they had become the licensee for action figures, be it Terminator, to Predator, to Aliens, to even Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and Police Academy. If you wanted action figures made of your movie, you went to Kenner, and they did not disappoint. The first initial JP release consisted of five human characters, seven medium-sized dinosaurs, two of which were electronic, four larger dinosaurs, the T-Rex being electronic, three vehicles, and one humongous playset in the form of the Jurassic Park Compound Command Center. As always, Kenner took liberties with the source material and expanded the line with some more exotic species and even pulled from the Crichton novel itself by giving Robert Muldoon a rocket launcher and including the juvenile T-Rex. Fun fact, on the back of the packaging where it showed the other figures you could get in the line, the T-Rex that was displayed was actually a maquette from the Stan Winston Studios. Yes, it wasn't a T-Rex that Kenner was releasing. All that said, it's still a badass figure. You can only come to the logical conclusion that Kenner did not have the large Rex ready in time for the figure line's initial release and pleaded with Stan Winston to use the maquette as part of the advertising line for the figures. Wave 2 consisted of reissues of the first figures with a whole new colour scheme along with a whole host of new dinosaurs and human characters. The humans were broken down into two groups, the Dino Trackers and the Evil Raiders, and one holy grail of this wave is the Carnotaurus figure known as Demon. As per usual, Kenner knocked it out of the park with these figures. And as well as all that, we had video games. Probably the best known of all of these was the one released by Ocean for the Super Nintendo. This top-down isomorphic shooter saw you take the role of a very muscular Alan Grant armed with some serious hardware. 
blowing the shit out of raptors and other dinosaurs. Because yes, I remember that in the movie. Another notable thing about this game was the first person sequences when you entered a building. You would put on night vision goggles and then would go into a first person mode, shooting dinosaurs that were loose inside in the compound or visitor center. Alternatively, if you didn't own a Super Nintendo, there was other options, such as the Sega Mega Drive game, which was essentially a platformer. Jurassic Park even found its way to the Amiga. Hell, Tiger even wanted in the action. And by action, I mean climbing a tree in order to escape the dinosaurs. And if video games weren't your thing, Parker Brothers released an absolutely awesome board game that essentially has you traverse the island to escape. As you can see, my version seen better days. While my heart is with Alien and Predator, Jurassic Park is the movie that made me appreciate cinema and filmmaking and also got me into the lifelong hobby of collecting figures. If you want to learn a bit more about Jurassic Park collectibles, check out this awesome book by Christoph Tejas. It's essentially a guide from everything Jurassic Park to Jurassic World since the original release and is essential for any wannabe collectors. So with that, big thanks to Video Tasties for letting me participate. Not included. Jurassic Park! The dinosaurs are on a rampage and only the JP team is tough enough to stop them! Rat fires his net launcher. Ellie launches her grappling hook. Fultoon fires a tranquilizer. Each sold separately. It's happening, but only at Jurassic Park. Our dinosaurs are gentle vegetarians. <laughs> It's Jurassic Park. A raptor grabs a baby dinosaur. Grant tears off in the bush devil tracker to save it. Use the snare! He's safe! Look out, Triceratops! But the young T-Rex wants a piece of the action. Dino damage! Can the dinosaurs be recaptured? Look for the JP mark. It's happening, but only at Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, Bush Devil Tracker, dinosaurs and figures each sold separately. Jurassic Park, dinosaurs are on the loose. Can the Dino Tracker stop them? T-Rex trying to break up a fight. Jaws, Jackson, Snacks, a ram head. Look for all the incredible action that lives on. Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, the dinosaurs are on the loose again. Now Grant's armed to the teeth and Malcolm's loaded with weapons. They chase down a gallon mindless in the capture cruiser. Got him! But the giant electronic Utah Raptor surprises them. It's ah! happening again only at Jurassic Park. Capitalizing on the immense popularity of the 1993 film, several Jurassic Park video games were released in the same year. These weren't just one title ported across different consoles, but rather unique experiences designed for each platform. Here's a breakdown of the 1993 Jurassic Park game. The Sega game developed by Blue Sky Software. This side-scrolling action game offered two playable characters, Dr. Alan Grant and the Velociraptor. Each character has a distinct storyline and levels. Ocean Software developed the NES and Game Boy game. It was a top-down perspective game where you played Dr. Grant, just like in the movie. Your objective was to complete missions, survive dinosaur encounters, and ultimately escape the island. Super Nintendo version was also by Ocean Software. This version offered a mix of gameplay style, primarily a top-down perspective. It switched to first person when entering buildings. Similar to the NES version, you played Dr. Grant and tackled various objectives to escape the island. These games all capture the thrill and danger of Jurassic Park, albeit with limitations due to the technology at the time. Interestingly, in 2023, a compilation titled Jurassic Park Classic Games Collection was released for modern consoles allowing players to experience these retro adventures again. One of my favourites was the arcade game with the light gun, so let's have a look at that now.
Jurassic Park, man. Talk about a movie when you think about it. it. takes you back to your childhood. I can remember seeing that first teaser trailer for Jurassic Park when I was young, right? And them guys are digging in the mine and they find this little amber thing and they're like, what is this? And it's a mosquito and it's like, oh crap, dinosaurs are coming back and it's a Steven Spielberg movie. You know, that trailer, that little teaser trailer had this like special feel to it and it really felt, it still sort of felt much like an 80s teaser trailer so it was really good. It had a great voiceover and then of course as it, as it progressed and we were getting closer I can remember seeing the full trailer and TV spots and stuff like especially with it I mean who doesn't forget like the T-Rex slamming down or the the thumping of the T-Rex sound in the water you know in the cup going boom they use that a lot and I, re I remember that as well that was that was amazing you know it's this amazing feeling seeing that and of course as a kid growing up in the 90s you're like you begged your parents to go see this. And once again, uh, you know, this thinking about movies like this, especially like Jurassic Park. And, and when I went to the theaters and saw it with my family in the theaters in a packed house, it really makes you appreciate these movies that we had growing up. Uh, Cause you really don't feel about movies the same way. Like you did these movies back in the day. And you just being in that theater, surrounded by everybody with your family and your brothers and your parents. And like, everybody was into this movie and just the, the experience with it. Cause like there was so much hype, so, Seriously, there was so much hype around it. I mean, uh, th this was like the hypiest hype of a movie at this time, uh, much uh, much akin to so many other movies like Batmania and all that as well. But like when you're there and you're in that theater and you you see the dinosaur the first for the first time, I still I like I believe those were real freaking dinosaurs. They were like real freaking dinosaurs. That's how well the special effects were in the movie. And matter of fact, I still think they hold up today. I still think the special effects and the practical effects of dinosaurs still hold up in Jurassic Park to this very day. And it's still had that Spielbergian s spill to it uh, feel to it you know when you you know how Spielberg movies feel the Amblin Spielberg it felt like that and I mean you had like oh, were the kids going to survive when they're being chased by the the T-Rex or are they going to survive you're like worried about and the Raptors seeing the Raptors and what's going to happen with Sam Neill is, is, is you know what's he going to do and then you got Jeff Goldblum just being Jeff Goldblum, being awesome, you right. So you're watching this movie, and it's just fun, and it's like uh, the like the hype to build up to it was all worth it when you're sitting in that theater watching it with your popcorn, and just like the movie is mind blowing. The it, it was mind blowing then, and it's still just an amazing movie to this, to this day. Uh, I love the movie. I think it's an amazing movie. I mean, dinosaurs. 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs roamed the earth, and now they're back living amongst us. Jurassic Park, right? So, I mean, it, what kid did growing up did not like dinosaurs? You had your dinosaurs, you played with them and stuff, right? And now you're watching them on a big screen, and like you're living because like the kids represent you as the audience member when you were young. Sam Neill and uh, them represent the adults and stuff, and like hold on to your butts. You had Samuel L. Jackson, right? So it's like had something for everybody, and you could you see it, and it's just. It's an amazing movie. It's an amazing movie and the hype was real. The hype was definitely real. Just a movie.
film this big in pop culture couldn't get away without being parodied. So let's have a look at some. And for his tale of genetics gone haywire in a retirement community, Steven Spielberg, Geriatric Park. Flashlight. Okay. There's the main gate. And here we are. No, 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 man. We're over here. Uh, I don't think so. We took the left turn at the gate. So that would put us... Garth! Wait a minute. I know where we are. I'm pretty good with maps. Shh! Listen. What? Since the beginning of time, man has searched the earth for evidence of its past. But while some have looked for clues to the mystery, one man has found the way to bring the mystery back to life. I own an island off the coast of Costa Rica, and I spent the last five years setting up a kind of biological preserve. Here, on this private island, Science has defied evolution. Where do you get a hundred million year old dinosaur plot? Genetics has mastered creation. We've made living biological attractions so astounding that they'll capture the imagination of the entire planet. And extinction is a thing of the past. Welcome to Jurassic Park. They got in there, King Kong. None of these attractions are ready yet, of course, but the park will open with the basic tour you're about to take. Hey, look at this. You see something? Dinosaurs and man, two species separated by 65 million years of evolution, have just been suddenly thrown back into the mix together. Can I touch it? Sure. How can we possibly have the slightest idea? You feel that? Senses are failing all over the park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's nice. The phones are out too. Gotta go. Universal Pictures presents. Hey, hey, Ian, freeze! I can't get Jurassic Park back online. An adventure 65 million years in the making. Oh no. Which is 
just a delay. That's all it is. All major theme parks had delays. When they opened Disneyland in 1956, mm. nothing worked. But John, if the Pirates of the Caribbean breaks down, the pirates don't eat the tourists. You sure we're safe? Yes. Unless they figured out how to open doors. Jurassic Park. It won three Academy Awards. It had the biggest opening day ever. The biggest three-day weekend ever. The biggest seven-day gross ever. Jurassic Park has earned an astounding $900 million at the worldwide box office. On October 4th, 1994, Steven Spielberg's entertainment powerhouse that made worldwide box office history opens its gates for everyone to own. Coming to home video, priced at just $24.98, and there will be no pay-per-view prior to February 1st, 1995. So we'll have a look at the physical media that I own of Jurassic Park from 1993. First up, the Blu-ray. The poster, I'm still not sure of, but Half like it, half don't like it. Would have been nice if it was reversible with the original cover, or the original poster, I should say. I got that. The CD soundtrack, and the wonderful John Williams. You know, they re-released a extended version at some point in the early 2000s, I believe, but what's it down here? Yeah, some pictures and details about the tracks. That's nice. Uh, and then we got the DVDs. We got this box set of the first two films. But we'll only look at the first one for this. In widescreen, best way to see this film. But another poster not sold on, but a nice shiny cover with a lot of making ofs. You could spend days watching that. Uh, behind here. Yeah, just a sign by Spiel there we go. So that. Then we've got another DVD in a slip cover, which I do prefer. It's nice and shiny and it's got the T-Rex. I think it's so uh, yeah, this is all three films in one box set. Let's see if we can carefully get it out. The trilogy collection. And yeah, so it's just three discs. So got that. And another ultimate collection. So this is uh three films and and extras. Yeah, Beyond Jurassic Park with a lot of features. Very careful these because sometimes they fall out, but there we go. Lost World, Beyond Jurassic Park, Just Part 3, and the original Jurassic Park. And of course, we've got the VHS, which uh, is one of the most sold ones ever. And it comes with oh, the receipt. I didn't buy this, but someone did. Paid $9.99 for this back in 1984. Uh, sorry, 1994. And you come with this nice little booklet. Congratulations on buying the biggest movie of all time. Well, it was at that point. And then got more making of the details, facts. And coming soon from Spiel Rock, or whatever it's called. So that. And finally, my favorite of all this, is this lovely plastic case. Jurassic Park in a fossil box. It's a hard plastic, embossed with fossils, and just carries the same VHS that was in the other box set, and the same information. But uh, there's some details. Occasional mild language. But yeah. And it's quite hefty, it's a good weight to that, but there we go. Now on with the rest of the show. The biggest movie of all time will become the biggest video event in history as MCA Universal Home Video launches one of the video industry's most comprehensive marketing campaigns ever. Jurassic Park was first released on VHS and Laserdisc on October 4th, 1994 by MCA Universal Home Video. With 17 million units sold, Jurassic Park is the fifth best-selling VHS tape ever. 
A seven-month marketing blitz that starts this July and continues through the holidays and into 1995. It all begins with a pre-sale campaign like no other. Retailers will receive a unique merchandising kit that includes a three-sided sign-up center announcing the video release of Jurassic Park and two exciting consumer offers. One panel features an impressive consumer gift with reservation offer. Consumers can receive a special edition Dinosaurs of Jurassic Park print, suitable for framing, free when they reserve a copy of Jurassic Park. These beautifully reproduced prints are based on the original conceptual drawings created by the Stan Winston Studio and are exclusive to the pre-selling of the Jurassic Park video cassette. Another panel announces the exotic Escape to Kauai Jurassic Park sweepstakes to consumers. They can enter the sweepstakes by completing an entry form located on the sign-up center. Fifteen grand prize winners will receive an all-expense-paid trip for four to the island of Kauai for four nights and five days. This unforgettable vacation includes airfare, hotel accommodations, ground transportation, a helicopter tour of Kauai, plus a special themed welcome dinner and a Jurassic Park survival kit. Total grand prize package is valued at an estimated $8,000. Jurassic Park survival kits will also be awarded to 100 first prize winners. The kits are packed full of official Jurassic Park merchandise, including the Ocean of America Jurassic Park video game, Kenner Jurassic Park toys, Jurassic Park Sega Genesis, Sega CD and Game Gear video games, as well as the Tiger Electronics Jurassic Park handheld game, a Jurassic Park cap, sweatshirt, jacket, and wristwatch. The Jurassic Park Survival Kit is worth over $300. The pre-sale merchandising kit also includes an oversized video box with two danglers, plus six two-sided 12 by 12 cards, retail buttons, two static cling window decals, and three one-sheet posters. Advertising support begins big and early as well, starting with a radio and national print campaign promoting the gift with reservation offer and the Escape to Kauai Jurassic Park sweepstakes. This extensive pre-sale campaign will create over 2 billion Jurassic Park pre-sale consumer impressions, and that's only the beginning. We'll team up with MTV and Beach MTV to bring viewers the outrageous Jurassic Park Call of the Wild contest. Three times a week, contestants will go head-to-head -head in a fierce competition to win their own Jurassic Park survival kits, including one of the first home video release copies of Jurassic Park. And viewers at home can compete to win a trip for two to Kauai by dialing MCA Universal Home Video special Jurassic Park hotline. Beach MTV segments with the Jurassic Park promotion will be taped for the first time ever in Jurassic Park Stomping Ground, Hawaii, and will air three times a week for four weeks beginning July 25th. Next comes an extensive cross-promotional program with Jell-O ready-to-eat snacks. This massive promotion features a $5 consumer mail-in rebate offer with the purchase of the Jurassic Park video and six proofs of purchase from Jell-O ready-to-eat gelatin and pudding snacks. It begins September 15, 1994 and runs through January 31, 1995. Jell-O is supporting this mail-in rebate offer with a multi-million dollar advertising campaign promoting the Jurassic Park video, the mail-in rebate offer, and a Jiggler Cutter offer. Next in our Jurassic Park campaign, we're hatching something really exciting. MCA Universal Home Video will connect with CompuServe for our first ever online promotion. CompuServe, the leading worldwide provider of computer-based information with nearly 1.9 million members, will feature an online trivia promotion with prizes that will run from August through September. Plus, three full-page color magazine ads will run in CompuServe magazine during that same period. And the promotions continue in October with an on-air sweepstakes on the Sci-Fi Channel that will reach 24 million households. Tiger Electronics, Ocean of America, and Kenner, exclusive licensees of Jurassic Park merchandise, will also join in on this historic home video marketing campaign, promoting the video cassette with tags on their network, cable, and spot TV commercials, running from October 1994 through January 1995. Rider 18 coming at you and here it is Jurassic Park on Laserdisc. This is the UK PAL release and uh, it comes in this very nice box set. I don't know if all of the UK releases had this box set but the guy I bought this off from in the job lot uh, he had this box with it so I don't know if they all came with this set 
as you see it's got a lot of cool detail on here and I dread to think how expensive this would have been when it was brand new and uh, it does come with the disc as well if we just take out the disc and as you can see uh, very standard cover the usual standard for Jurassic Park but the good thing is this release is pressed by Pioneer themselves so the sound and picture quality are absolutely top-notch if I want to show someone how good Laserdisc can be this is the one that I would normally show first uh, this was released in 1994 so it would have been around the same time as the VHS except this would have been in full widescreen rather than the VHS uh, uh, sound is pretty standard as you can see all the uh, chapter stops synopsis and pictures there and uh, yeah this is a very good release I'd highly recommend it if you really want to get into Laserdisc this is probably a release that you should get into and also with it it did come with a little booklet well I say little quite a big booklet here and it's got all of these uh, cool pictures inside just show you some of that There's Sam Neill, Laura Dern it's got a map of the island uh, Jurassic Facts some more pictures there's Dickie Attenborough all of these production notes but like I said, I can't rem I'm not too sure if all of this came with every release. This must have been some sort of special edition that the uh, the guy had. So yeah, Jurassic Park on Laserdisc, highly recommended. One of the best ones I own. And uh, as I said, if you want to get to the format, this is one to go for. So yeah. Retailers will have the opportunity to create the Jurassic Park environment in their stores as we provide them with an extensive array of merchandisers and point of purchase material, including a 48 unit counter merchandiser a 48-unit floor merchandiser, a 96-unit floor merchandiser with motorized gates, and a 168-unit floor merchandiser with motorized gates and lights. 768 and 1152-unit pallet backs are also available. And the campaign continues. Point of sale items include a pop-up standee featuring dinosaurs from the movie, one sheet posters and half sheet posters, and static claims. All together, the Jurassic Park marketing and advertising campaign will total 8.3 billion consumer impressions, reaching 98% of consumers, an average of 25.2 times. The adventure that was 65 million years in the making becomes the home video backed by over 65 million dollars in advertising and marketing support. Get ready for Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park, coming to home video October 4th, 1994. Once Jurassic Park hits the streets, there's just no stopping it. From MCA Universal Home Video and Amblin Entertainment. Jurassic Park was broadcast on US television for the first time on NBC on May 7th, 1995, and Christmas Day on BBC One in the UK in 1996. This May, it's coming. To NBC. scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. An experiment that would make history a result they never expected. Senses are failing all over the park. Yeah, that's nice. Gotta go. Shut down the system. It's not nice to fool with Mother Nature. Jurassic Park, Sunday at 8.30, 7.30 Central on NBC. For the first time on television, NBC presents the biggest movie ever made. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Sunday, May 7th, at a special time. Look out! Everyone will be watching Jurassic Park, Sunday, May 7th at 8, 7 central on NBC. Sixty-five million years of evolution separated man from the dinosaurs. Until now. What species is this? It's a Velociraptor. Sam Neill. The bread raptors. Ellie, boot up the door locks! Jeff Goldblum. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. And Laura Dern. 
I think we're back in business. Star in the Steven Spielberg blockbuster. Ah! Jurassic Park. Christmas Day at 6.30 on BBC One. I'm fairly alarmed here. Since the beginning of time, man has searched the earth for evidence of its past. But while some have looked for clues to the mystery, one man has found the way to bring the mystery back to life. I own an island off the coast of Costa Rica, and I spent the last five years setting up a kind of biological preserve here on this private island. Science has defined evolution. Where do you get a hundred million year old dinosaur plot? Genetics has mastered creation. We've made living biological attractions so astounding that they'll capture the imagination of the entire planet. And extinction <laughs> is a thing of the past. Welcome to Jurassic Park. We got to wear King Kong. None of these attractions are ready yet, of course, but the park will open with the basic tour you're about to take. Hey, look at this. You see something? Dinosaurs and man. Two species separated by 65 million years of evolution just been suddenly thrown back into the mix together. How can we possibly have the slightest idea? You feel that? Jurassic Park. <laughs>